we might one day duplicate man. His form, his body, his actions and reactions. Carefully engineered for lifelike appearance. Non-biological intelligence is growing exponentially. Biological intelligence isn't really growing at all. Or if it's growing, it's growing at such a slow rate that it's not noticeable. Which is why non-biological intelligence ultimately will become dominant. Yeah, right. It's so it's, it's, it's one zero one. Uh, I mean, one zero 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 one zero or zero zero one. Yeah, that's all. Will computers ever become conscious beings? Computers calculate using zeros and ones. Therefore, many people, among them some scientists, believe that they will never become more than sophisticated calculation machines. The great scientist, Professor Frankenstein, when his monster moved for the first time, without knowing it, he spoke of the absolute distinction between the artificial brain and the human brain when he said it's alive it's alive it's alive it's alive it's alive so in theory theory is not for that no I believe I believe I believe so the difference between biological and artificial intelligence can be summed up in one word life at least that's what Dr. White believes it is indeed hard to imagine that one day digital machines created by us will have a consciousness. Ultimately, it literally gets confused until ultimately it falls over onto its butt. There you go. <laughs> but then, why do we think of ourselves as such unique and sacred mechanisms? After all, we are also defined by a digital code, our DNA code. The approach used today in building artificial intelligence is not to try to program conscious beings, but instead to let those robots learn by themselves, to acquire knowledge step by step, just as we do. There's no actual programming done in these things. What we do is we create a neural topology, like um, the way that our nervous network is designed, you know, the brain on top and, and all these little tendrils that go to all our muscles. And then what happens is that because there's no other solution for it, when this thing powers on, it learns to walk. You can actually watch it. When it comes up, it goes completely crazy, okay? And all its legs, it basically comes up in a state of epileptic fit. And then it winds up being able to figure its way out. And as you watch, there, it just learned to walk. So it programmed itself in a very short period of time. Most people have always assumed that you're supposed to build a brain and then sort of like a body will fall out of it, right? The thing is, of course, is that well over half the species on the planet have no brain to speak of at all, but they manage to survive and move around very well and very effectively. So what we've done is we've tried to evolve things from the bottom up. And in the process, we have not yet evolved brains, but we have managed to evolve very effective nervous systems. Self-organizing systems such as neural networks can yield remarkable results. Carl Sims made a software program of small cubic creatures that were able to evolve. Those that moved the fastest got the right to procreate. But there was always random change built into their program, into their genes, so to speak, in order to make them evolve. And Sims watched the strange creatures that appeared on his computer screen. He also let them compete for a green cube. Then, something extraordinary happened that wasn't programmed. One of the creatures jumped over the green cube and attacked its competitor before going for the cube. Evolution had produced a creature that was the most able to compete, and therefore to survive. It was just a software program, but one that organized itself. One day, very powerful computers may surprise us. First, we say that if a computer could play chess, then it would think like us. And then we get a computer to play chess, and we say, that's really not thinking. And the answer is that we don't really know what thinking is. I would argue that machines do a pretty good job right now at thinking, and um, they don't do as good a job at creating, although we don't really know what creating is. And they don't do a very good job at having a soul, but we don't really know what a soul is. But when we can define it, they do a pretty good job at doing it. I'm not like you. Aww. 
say he loves me? I love you too. If we give machines a body, if we build embodied entities, if we let them right from the start being part of a community, if we make them learn interacting with us, learning to distinguish between themselves and the environment, learning to, then automatically things like love and stuff like that will emerge. A baby, a newborn baby, doesn't have those values at all. It learns it by interacting with its parents, its family, and its, its community. Is it love that these robots will learn once they become intelligent, or will they turn against their creators? And historically, uh, humans don't do well living side to, by side with other things that are human-like. One or the other survives and the other goes away. We don't do well in cooperation. 500 years ago, when humans entered the new world, it was not a good outcome for the natives. And I don't expect as we enter this newer world, this brave new world, that it will be pleasant for the losers. And um, the winners may be some transhuman thing, but the loser losers or the typical inhabitants of the last 500 years won't be treated well, because that's not been the history of man, going all the way back to what happened to the Neanderthals when the Homo sapiens arrived. They didn't live in cooperation, even though they're very similar. My worry is that if artificial intelligence is allowed to um, develop entirely separately from us, and if it develops a lot more quickly than we can alter our biological bodies, then it may become vastly more intelligent, more wise than us, and uh, we'll get left behind. And personally, I don't want to be left behind. I'd rather be up there with the most advanced creatures. If we don't want to end up obsolete at birth, if we want to stay the most advanced beings, there seems to be only one solution to become robots ourselves.